the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where fans here saw Jeremy McGrath dominate for six consecutive seasons, but not recently. It's round seven of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speedstick. Hello, everybody. I'm Art Ekman. It's been a season of surprises. David Villeman has done very, very well. A model of consistency. Six consecutive podiums along with the three victories. Joining me now is former champion David Bailey. And David, even though he's got three wins on the season, which gives him a step up on the championship race, he's got two guys right behind him that want to start runs. Well, they had their opportunity last week. Travis Pastrana out front leading Carmichael. Travis in the green and yellow, leaving the door open in his corner. Boom, contact. Ricky rides right through it, picks up the lead, and Travis is forced to wait another week to pick up his first 250 win. Now, talking with Travis since that contact, he understands that's just racing. He doesn't blame Ricky for getting in there and bumping him. So there's no hard feelings here tonight, Art. David, an interesting track. Why don't you take us through the speed stick track map? I expect to see the whoops separate these riders tonight. After those, they make a right, go back across the starting line under the tunnel jump. But this rhythm section here has been spectacular all weekend. The riders have not found the fastest way through there yet. Michael Rocco has been steady, but the guy they call The Rock would love to turn his win into two wins and close the gap on points leader David Billiman. Whenever Michael Rocco won the third round of the series at Anaheim, a lot of people thought The Rock would start to roll, but unfortunately, he sprained his wrist the next week. His results have shown since then a four, a four, and a five, but he says he's 100% for the Metrodome. And in order for LaRocco to win, he's got to make every one of these big jumps perfect. If he sprains that wrist again, it's going to be a long 20 laps here at the Metrodome. LaRocco heads our list to the lineup the first heat of 250 qualifying. He's 18 points behind Philemon in second place. Ricky Carmichael, 28 points off the lead. Nathan Ramsey's done good things on that four-stroke for a Honda. Sebastian Tortelli at the line for the first race of the year for Sebastian. During the offseason, doctors got into that injured shoulder. They found much more damage than they first thought. He's only been racing the last three weeks. Well, he looks sharp so far. In practice, he looked fast. He was jumping some of the really scary stuff that the top guys were doing. He had to ride a preliminary qualifier as well because he wasn't seated after not riding any of the races yet. And he got the whole shot and went wire to wire in that. There's Ricky sandwiched between... LaRocco and Nathan Ramsey, who's been fast. Ramsey wrapped up a 125 title here a few years ago. And here we go. LaRocco gets a good start on the inside. Les Bell curls from the outside. Number 11 on the Kawasaki. Ezra Lusk. Sebastian Tortelli, second place. Tortelli almost got the block pass. Then we've got Wyndham in third. LaRocco is back in fifth with Carmichael in sixth. Remember, only the top four qualify directly to the main event. Well, this is a tough one, too. Somebody is going to get bumped, making that semi exciting. Right now, Ricky is not in position to qualify for the main event, but I imagine that will change. There's Kevin back in action, wearing the camo gear, in case you missed him. <laughs> Kevin Windham has come back to this race after a one-race hiatus uh, to get his mind straightened out and kind of get refocused as he was having some very poor results in the opening five rounds. Number 14 on the Suzuki behind Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli looks in good shape, at least here for the qualifier. Well, he got a little extra time on the track as well. He had, like I said, riding that qualifier. He got a he's not the kind of guy that's going to get tired out here. The more laps, the better for him. Carmichael through the whoop. Lutz holding his own out front. Good to see Ezra finally get a start. He's had tough times in the first few laps of the race. He's been fighting with guys that never really get the chance to see the leaders. Not often enough anyway. And here he is. Great opportunity to show us what he's got. His best qualifier was the second in Anaheim 2. Let's check out the engine noise and ride with these riders. Here's Wyndham just explode the power right there. That's because he's jumping a triple as they get back in and the turn pops into the top. Mr. Lasky's best race of the season is the opener of him. Matt starts has been his drawback. He got off to a good one this time, David. Well, what's more important is that he holds on to it. And maybe a little bit fortunate that he's got Tortelli and Wyndham back there going, you know what, since we just had some time off, second and third isn't bad. We're in the main. Let's not 
do anything stupid and ruin it. But if it was Carmichael back there in second, Lusk would have a whole different issue on his heel. Tony Kelly trying to hold on to second place with Wyndham behind him. And so it's Lusk, Tortelli, Wyndham, and Carmichael. Now Wyndham having to go to the inside that time. If he went wide and tried to explode that power again and jump the triple, after he approached the other triple, the main one, Carmichael could have dove in on the inside. Nathan Ramsey quite likely will have to go on to the semifinal round out of this bunch. But Ricky Carmichael won't have the best choice of gate. Well, it's not over yet. We got at the halfway point. Ricky's pretty aggressive. The green boxes next to the names means they moved up a position the last lap. A red box alongside their rider number means they dropped one. Here comes Ricky Carmichael trying to make the pass on Wyndham. Wyndham. Right behind Torcelli. Here comes Carmichael, though. By the bar, the rhythm section. Ricky Carmichael. You can tell he just poured on that power. He looks back at Kevin Wyndham. You can hear how early he's on the power with the clutch in before he even gets to the corner. He left the clutch out in the berm. The RPMs are already there. That's what it takes to get over that triple. And that time, Wyndham really could have gone out there and cut off the line. I think he was afraid that Carmichael would have jumped it anyway, and he'd have got to land it on. And so the next target for Ricky Carmichael will be Sebastian Tortelli. Will he have enough time? He might be able to take advantage of Tortelli. Ricky is a lot more up to speed in the season, a lot more fresh. Watch this triple right here. Uh, when you stand there on the floor at 65 feet, and the takeoff is so steep. First time that Jeremy did that yesterday. He knows, dived it in, almost didn't clear it, scared to death, and then Travis landed short, just moved some dirt around it. I think it broke something on his motorcycle. So the impact there, if you come up short, really doesn't leave him with much. Carmichael now trying to get into position to make a pass on Tortelli. A good battle going on between Team Honda riders. Tortelli's first qualifying try. Now look, Carmichael has picked up the time, four tenths of a second better in the last lap. He could still win this. I thought I thought was going to check out a little more than he has. Watch, watch Carmichael triple that, and Tortelli gets all out of control, just out of Ricky's way. That was fortunate. Ricky was smart to make sure that he was, if he was going to do that triple, be in a different line. It works. That opens it up now. Chad Watts, Ricky's mechanic. Boy, he's got some fish tailing through those loops. You have to get comfortable with that. One lap board is out. That's right where he gets his signal. Chad's probably putting something on there like, get this guy, win the heat race. Better position to the gate, faster heat race, more confidence going to the main, and more importantly, don't let Luck get anything started. Ricky Carmichael has more qualifying heat wins this year than anyone in the 250 division. He's won five out of six he's tried so far coming into this round. Carmichael, as they have a lap rider in front, looking back, is Ezra Lusk, the two former friends. Ricky Carmichael in Northern Florida. Lusk was from Southern Georgia, has moved up now north of Atlanta. Really looking forward to next week out there. Right now, one more corner, and he's got a heat race win over the fastest guy on the track right now. He takes the inside. It looks like Ezra Lusk will get his first heat one of the year. Very fine ride for the Team Chevy Trucks 11 Kawasaki, the final transfer spot with Wyndham and LaRocco battling it out. Well, LaRocco is going to have to go to the semi, and you can tell right there how much that meant to Ezra. Finally, and that just shows how important the start is. He had the speed to hang on. Even though Ricky caught him, he still got the win. Boy, that's got to be a little release of pressure for his new team, Kawasaki. After switching teams in the offseason, let's take a look at the Honda results page. Lusk, Carmichael, Tortelli and Wyndham on to the main event. Mike LaRocca and others go to the semi-final round. Back with more 250 action in a moment. Round seven of EA Sports Supercross is being brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and Arena Cross champion. 
by EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. They've come all the way from Bismarck to be here in Minneapolis, Minnesota to cheer their favorite riders. As we take a look now at the lineup for our second qualifying heat, David Villeman with three wins and six podiums, Travis Pastrana, the Mr. Excitement, Stefan Roncada, he's got two podiums, McGrath, Nicholas Way is the top privateer in the points race. That means a lot of bread. So far he's earned about $6,300 just in privateer bonus money from the Clear Channel. And so we're getting set for a what could be a terrifically exciting qualifying heat. 544 is Forrest Butler out of Miami, Florida. As we get set, and we're off and running. Jeremy McGrath got the big break. Jeremy McGrath out of the turn first. His starts have been amazing lately. Pastrana in a battle with McGrath. Pastrana the blood pass. The crowd comes alive! Here comes Villeman! Ah, oh, Jeremy McGrath in the battle for second place. So the Suzuki and Travis Sestrada is Hobie Suzuki. Suzuki is out in front under the tunnel bus. McGrath in second place with Villeman in third. And Fonseca in fourth. McGrath doing a good job to hang on to second after getting bumped a little bit by Pastrana. You, you can't blame Pastrana for getting in there and taking the lead. Jeremy just that's a little bit too much room, and you can't do that with an 18-year-old on your heels. Ron Neiman is in last. It's going to take a miracle for him to get into the main event and not to avoid the semi-final round. Now, you know, in looking at Travis, I really don't feel like he's been at 100%. Bill and Carmichael on the other hand have had everything going right, haven't had any real uh, setbacks. But Travis, ever since Phoenix, hasn't been able to ride and train during the week, not effectively. Last week he had the opportunity, but he flew to Oklahoma, and it snowed six inches. So the only practice he's been able to get is on Fridays before the event. This week, I asked him about it, he goes, oh, I rode too much. I got blisters everywhere, but at least I feel comfortable on the motorcycle. Number 12, the success story of the season. Big week last week to break RC's two-race win streak. Gaining an 18-point lead on LaRocco, a 28-point lead on RC. The first rider with three wins doubles his chances of winning the title. And that's what happened to Villeman. Number two, Jeremy McGrath. Is following Travis Pastrana, 199. Well, he needs to see how fast Travis enters that loop section. driving a little flatter uh, that wood section over that double. That's Skip Norfolk, his mechanic. Pastrana, 49-3, 49-3. 49 for Travis. Five. spotters to take a look at which rhythm is faster through the, some of these sections, what's better, setting up for them and after, inside or outside, they figure all that out. A lot of people on headset, a lot Looks of video like cameras. A little kicker in the face. What's to the left and what's to the right? Oh, how many two? Six inches either way, do anything for him? If he moves to the left a little bit, he can do it. It's a better face. Ah, uh, Travis made a mistake. Ah, almost. Here comes Villeman. Villeman makes the pass on uh, Jeremy McGrath. Villeman into the second place. There you see Travis Pastrana, David Villeman. Uh, Jeremy McGrath still within qualifying position. Looks like what may have happened there is Travis's foot peg caught that tough block, pulled it out in front of Jeremy, he had nowhere to go. 
the villain just in the right place at the right time. It was obvious the spotters were talking about riders in front of lappers, uh, uh, which direction mm -hmm. this Jeremy should go to try to get the fastest way around. Also, yeah, well, they were talking about a little kicker in the face of one of those doubles. Skip was trying to find out if he could get him to move one way or the other and miss that, stay a little bit lower to the ground. But Jeremy, he can watch Villeman here and learn a little bit from him. You really don't want to ride around, show all your good stuff, and have those guys take a note of all that for the main event. It's one thing to hear it. It's another to be right there and see how it looks. Villeman has never won a qualifying heat this season that he actually won the main event. He has won qualifying to win, but he did not win that event at Anaheim. Anaheim, too. It really doesn't seem to matter for Villeman. He understands that the main event is a whole separate race. He's actually won a main event from the semi. So did LaRocco. So it's not a disaster. He'd like to get it over with. 49.1, they're saying on the radio for McGrath. So he's picking it up on the leaders. Actually, uh, he might have been talking about Pastrana out front. Villeman following the same line of Travis, but unable to triple it. Now, the thing is interesting in watching these different drivers. Villeman soaks up the track so well, and sometimes he's unable to jump some of the other stuff that these guys do. He's got to get down on the seat, seat bounce it, and get a little bit more rebound out of suspension. So it's Pastrana, Villeman, McGrath, and Fonseca in line to qualify with Heath Boss, the successful privateer on the bubble. One lap to go. The white flag for Travis Pastrana. And that was a 49 flat. Jeremy turned a 49.8, looks like that last lap. So he's studying these two guys in front of him, looking at the different timings. If he can get another good start in the main event, I don't think you'll see him make mistakes or get caught off guard, but a tough block being in front of him. Jeremy actually had a faster lap than David Villeman in the last lap with a 49.5. Villeman's 49. 40 at uh, 9.9, .9, but she's 49 and flat for this young man. This is where he's making up so much time through that whoop section. Every lap, he stretches it out a couple of bike lanes. And his entrance speed is what sets that up. One more corner, and he gets a heat win. Eyes the checkers. Grandpa Strata. Oh, 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 he does a nothing. And McGrath. Pastrana with his fourth qualifying heat win. Jeremy committed. Travis celebrates with the wheelie. Look at him, just one trick after another. Villeman in second, McGrath third. Heath Voss, who is the top privateer finish of the year last week in ninth, will have to go on to the semi-final round along with Stefan Roncotta and Nicholas Way. The Suzuki results, Pastrana, Villeman, McGrath, and Fonseca on their way to the main event. We're going to be talking about those nerves before the race starts when we return to Minneapolis, Minnesota and the Metrodome. David Villeman who captured the checkered flag. David Villeman, the second consecutive victory of the season. Toronto, the checkers. Take a look at future upcoming events for us. Hope you can make it to the Super Bowl City New Orleans on the 16th or Houston, Texas. Travis Pastrana had the fastest heat time in the 250s. He's with Davey Coates. Well, Travis, you always look like you're having fun, but after that heat race, you looked really happy. A lot of fun tricks afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Just did nothing. I was going to do a no-hand lander, but it kind of chickened out a little bit. Definitely here to race and uh, had some fun out there. I think that's what I've been missing the last couple weeks. And this week, I did a lot of uh, practicing with my friend Kenny Bartram just on the freestyle. And, and I felt really good all practice and hopefully it uh, can uh, take over to the main event. All the tricks aside, man, going through this whoop section, you're just eating up the time. You look really solid through there. Is that where the race is going to be won or lost? The race is definitely going to be won or lost in the whoops. There's a big one kind of in the middle, almost endoed actually about the third lap. So hopefully we can avoid the crashes and, you know, definitely looking for a podium. But, man, I, I need to get this first win sometime. <laughs> Maybe tonight, Travis. Thanks a lot. Our Honda close-up today gets real close up to the goggles as former champion Jeff Emig explains to us one crucial aspect of racewear for the face. In Supercross, the riders earn their living in the dirt. 
But when that dirt gets in your face, that's when you need tear-offs. Tear-offs are clear film that you lay over the goggle. They're held on by three pins. In Supercross, you're going to use about three of them. Outdoor motocross, you can use upwards of six. When a rider goes over the triple jump or off the finish line jump, you'll see him pull one off. And if you're able to see clearly the whole race, sometimes you can win. You get to toss these to the fans in the stands. Thanks, Jeff. Another thing goggles do is hide the nervousness that riders often feel before a race. Just how nervous do they get? Well, we asked them about it. I think if I didn't get nervous, then it wouldn't excite me anymore. And, uh, get nervous and just use it for energy. It's really tough for me going into a race that I know I'm supposed to win. That's what I'm the most nervous, and I think, you know what? I, I can't get a second. I can't make a mistake. I can't do anything. I think it's good that you get nervous a little bit. In a race that you know you want to do well, you get the, the inside turns around for sure. But I mean, as far as like nervous, where you're nervous, nervous, now it's more like a excited type, let's get this thing on, get nervous. For sure, I'm going to have the butterflies, but, you know, a couple deep breaths and uh, away you go. Travis Pastrana in full race uniform ventured up into the stands to say hi to his fans. You don't think this guy's popular? Wow. We'll be back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota with super cross action in a moment. Part of the 54,657 fans here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, many of them youngsters with dreams of riding here someday. Our Suzuki big moment. Travis Pastrana's got the top qualifying time. He's got the first choice of the gate as a result of this fine race's fourth qualifying heat win of the season. Can he convert that into his first 215 main event win, however? Semifinals very important for gate position. Ramsey, Huffman, Johnson, Wilson, Gibson qualifying, as well as Roncata, Way, the top privateer, Heat Boss, Kyle Lewis, and Tyler Evans. The Nissan LCQ. Mike LaRocco was forced to go all the way to the LCQ to get a main gate position only once. I can remember in 250s if I ever seen anybody go through the LCQ to win the main event. The Suzuki starting grid as we check out the entire field. Travis Pastrana looking for his first 250 win in his first full season. Ezra Lusk with a great qualifier. Sebastian Tortelli coming back for his first race of the season. And there you see the rest of the field. Your gut feeling. Well, my gut feeling is that, like a lot of people, that this is Travis' weekend. Uh, Ezra beat Carmichael in that first heat. Carmichael had the faster lap time to catch up to him, but Ezra actually had a faster lap. There's Larry Brooks, who was doing a lot of grooming down there in the first corner. You notice that Jeremy McGrath has been getting a lot better starts lately. Every time I get ready to get on his case, there he is going through his pre-race routine. He's, he does something amazing, and I think Brooks was down there expecting Jeremy to get that hole shot. Jeremy has two hole shots so far this year, the all-power aid hole shot as he gets out of that first turn first. He wins $1,500. We've had a different hole shot winner every race. The hole shot winner has never won that race this year. It's going to be Sebastian Tortelli, the power aid hole shot winner this time. Fonseca in second. Lusk, a number great start in third. Jeremy McGrath, he's in fifth, making a move on Lusk. I think he's going to make that stick. There he goes by him. He moves into fourth, Jeremy McGrath. A good, aggressive move during the early going. LaRocco with a great start from the outside. Fine. My goodness, he's in sixth place. He's ahead of Carmichael, Wyndham, and Pastrana, and Billiman. All those guys very outside the top five right now, so. Well, wonders never see. Hold on to your butt. This is going to be a great I'll race. tell you, we've had some of the greatest dicing, greatest racing we've ever had in Supercross right here in 2002. Well, what a great opportunity for both. Well, you got three Hondas out front. That Ramsey in the third spot on that fourth stroke has been getting better and better each week. Almost up into third behind Roncada last week for the podium. Fonseca has been riding well, had a little bit of bad luck last week, had to drop out. Pastrana in tenth position for those Travis Pastrana fans. Here comes Jeremy McGrath. He, he wants to zero in here tonight, babe. He won the first six races ever staged in the Metrodome. 
And it was Billiman and Carmichael, the last two winners. This is his chance. Because he has been faster than the guys in front of him, other than perhaps Ramsey, who's caught him quite a few times this year. But he's got the heavyweights, Pastrana, Villeman, and Carmichael all behind him. Carmichael in seventh. Pastrana's right behind him. Oh, this could be a great one. Tortelli's on the season. And shoulder injury so serious that a reconstruction had to take place. Jeremy McGrath in the whoop section, battling the four-stroke Honda. What a move by Jeremy. There's Skip Norfolk giving him the board. It's going to be some excitement on that radio now. That's the first time I can remember this season Jeremy actually getting around Ramsey. That's the radio between Skip Norfolk and some of the spotters. 49-2, it's the 49-2. A 49-2, the fastest lap of the front five. Tortelli with a mistake. And here's Tortelli. Carmichael, 49.1. Carmichael, 49.1. You're seeing, you're hearing the team radio of Bud Light, Yamaha, Jeremy McGrath's crew, Skip Norfolk and the spotters. That lets Skip know what's going on out there, the, the complexion of this race, who's going fast, even if they're bearing the pack right now. They, need to, they don't need to race behind them, but it's good to know what's going on so they can get Jeremy in gear right now, or he can afford to wait just a little bit and be patient so it doesn't blow in the early part of the race. The longest ever without a win at the start of the season for Jeremy was 1997, seven Seven, he won here eight, in the eighth Rocco. round. This is the seventh round this season. He does not want to equal that record. Jeremy and Fonseca got together a little bit in Phoenix. I don't think they were too happy with each other. They haven't been around each other since, so I expect since you got to be aggressive here, this could get interesting. If Jeremy goes wide in that corner before the whoops, look at the battle for the lead. Fonseca taking on Tortelli. There goes Blumen. McGrath as well. McGrath tucking into third. Battling with Tortelli coming through the tunnel. Oh, it's a dangerous flag. He railed it through that tunnel, baby. He wanted it. I haven't seen this much fire, this much want in Jeremy. Other than maybe a heat race, but that was a risky move. He had to have a lot of trust in Tortelli not to just run him up into that wall. So now, he's got Fonseca in front of him. Now it gets to that physical thing I was talking about between he and Fonseca. They're friends, but a little bit of that got eroded at Phoenix, so I'm anxious to see how he plays this now. Fonseca has got to cover the inside in this left-hand corner at the end, and he does. McGrath making the inside short route. Now it's a little section. Jeremy McGrath, the black pass, a clean one. This is his house. This has been the best week for Jeremy. Coming into this race, he feels the best. I, I have a feeling that last week was the first race so far this season. We got a 42 on that 49. Where he was actually hoping that the next race would come right away. And now he's, he's showing us some of that fire. on the takeoff the triple left start, please. Oh, gotta take it to right now. Carmichael with a 50.1. 50.1, Carmichael. 1.1, Skip. Morocco's down. He's hurt. Morocco's down. And he's hurt, they say, on the radio. Morocco takes his helmet off. Helmet his right arm. Well, that's a big shakeup in the points up front. It doesn't affect Jeremy right now, but... You can see Carmichael in fourth. He's starting to run it in there. Let's go to Davey. Guys, Michael Rocco just walked past me and Dr. John Bonner. He is holding his right wrist and it doesn't look good. Back in the corner at the end of the whoops, he tangled with Travis Pastrana. I honestly can't tell you whose fault it was, but the Rocco's really complained about his wrist and he went straight to the doctor. That's always a bad sign. Ricky Carmichael is now in fourth. You see the last lap figures on the left portion of your screen. There's Mike LaRocco, and he is mad. There's no question about it. It takes him out of this championship race. He had all kinds of hopes. Well, that kind of goes back hard to what Davey was saying. He's going to have to have a flawless race, because if he comes up short a little somewhere or makes a mistake and jams that right wrist that he's holding right now, it's over, and that's what happens. 
A little gap now for Jeremy McGrath. Can he hold on for his 90th Supercross motocross victory of his career? Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's go back to Davy Combs quickly. Down here on the track, check it out, guys. Travis Pastrana, one lap after crash with Mike LaRocco. You see LaRocco's mechanic, Paul DeLoria, came over to complain. Travis crashed all by himself, came all the way over to the Parts Unlimited banner. Pastrana is also out of this main event. Two different crashes for Travis on two different laps, same whoop section. He looked hurt, and he's mad at himself, and Paul DeLoria, LaRocco's mechanic, went over there and let him know what he thought about that move before. But I Jeremy is unable to move really too much further away from Fonseca. Now Ricky Carmichael in third. And Ramsey in fourth. Three Hondas right behind Jeremy McGrath as we approach the halfway mark. The longer Fonseca can stay in second, the better it is for Jeremy. As Carmichael possesses that incredible speed to be able to close the gap on Jeremy and make it tight. Carmichael through the loop. contact with Fonseca and it bumped everything up and it ruined it for Ramsey who was just too close to react to all that. Now he's going to try to start that four stroke. Five, six, kick. Now Ramsey gets it going pretty well. That takes so much energy. Here comes LaRocco. Here comes LaRocco and he's still mad. One of the oldest guys and one of the youngest. McGrath just blew it out front. And Ricky Carmichael's our new leader. With Fonseca in second. Boy, what an opportunity for Ricky. He, he created that luck by putting all the pressure on, tightening the screws. McGrath made a mistake. Ricky went from third to first. Check it out again. McGrath jumping into this corner. Oh, he has to completely go off, do a donut. Wait for these guys to go by. That's been a tricky section, and why? the reason why is because there's a rut developing. They actually jumped across the corner right there. He got a little messed up in the rut. Millowan, the points leader, is in sixth. With Brent Cotty in front of him, Ezra Luskin fourth. McGrath now in third, on second, second to Ricky Carmichael. A tough break for Jeremy McGrath. And hey, McGrath behind these guys, just bobbled again, and now Lust goes by him. There's got to be a great sense of confidence now for Ricky Carmichael, who did not get the best of strikes. Now he's done a beautiful job of working his way back up through the field. Coming on this new straight podium, his attempt to get back from that DNF in the first round. The important part for Ricky right now is that he's got Billiman sitting back in sixth place. Now, Billiman is the kind of rider He's got Broncata, then Jeremy, then Lusk in front of him. He might be able to squeeze by those guys, but still, Carmichael's going to pick up some of the points he lost last week. Valuable for the title. Carmichael now controls this race from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He would love to have his second win in a row here in the Metrodome. Fonseca lost with his best performance so far, and McGrath in fourth. Ricky Carmichael, who came into this race in Minneapolis, leading 36 of the 60 laps in the last three races, is definitely back physically, David. He looks great. Michael Fonseca, Luskin third, McGrath in fourth. Fonseca doing an amazing job in this main event. Stay steady for all his chaos up front. He can hang on to the second place, and it's pretty solid right now. Guys, it's been a wild night down here on the infield. Listen, I talked to Asterisk 
sponsor Dr. John Bodner about that whole thing. The only thing he would tell me is that Michael Rocco indeed broke the radius on his right arm. So I think that gives us a pretty good idea why he was mad. The Rocco definitely blaming Pastrana for the collision. Guys, that's going to put him out for at least a month. Now, Pastrana talked about how important that whoop section was going to be. The race is going to be won or lost right there. Well, it, not in terms of the win for either one of those guys, but that whoop section did prove to be important. Right about there is where those guys made contact. David Rillman trying to move up. He's assaulting Jeremy McGrath in the whoop section, and uh, Villeman does move in front of McGrath. There were some rumors floating around this week. I don't know how true they were, but Carmichael not happy with that second place last week. He didn't treat that as a solid second place. Smart, in terms of the championship, he treated that as a loss. Honda wasn't too pleased about it either. Also, they had kind of a freak malfunction with Fonseca's bike that took him out of the race. Ramsey's out right there in that corner for good. So Honda tightened us a little bit as a team, and it's really paying off here with the top two spots. Valuable points at stake now for Villeman. As you see, Ezra Lusk in third. Behind him is Stefan Lampata, and then David Villeman in fifth. As uh, Villeman was able to get by Jeremy McGrath. There's Lampata, number 21. There's number 12, David Villeman in the Wolves. Slaps through those boots a lot faster. Couldn't quite get the block pass. Will Ron County give in? No. Now, you know, I talked about not really being too fond of some of the aggressive riding that Ron Cotta did at Anaheim. Now, I want to clarify that because I know Stephon's a little bummed at me, but aggressive riding is great. And yes, back in the 80s, we bumped each other every race. But it was some of the some of the lines that he took where he cut all the way across the racetrack and created something that really wasn't there. That's not the kind of racing that you want to see happen very often, and I'm never really going to sponsor that. But I definitely have been impressed. Here comes Villeman. He can't keep the edge. Just Ron Cotta got the good jump. Now, I am impressed, though, with Ron Cotta's intensity. Two podiums in a row and battling Villeman here. It's not by accident. Stefan has really turned it up. He's got used to the 250 class. Villeman is in danger of not making the podium. Once again, Ron Cotta, back and forth we go on the corner. So he knows how to retaliate to a move like that because he was doing a lot of that himself. He knew exactly what was going to happen there, and he covered it perfect. But if that continues, Villeman's going to get upset because Villeman is the points leader, been on the podium every time. He needs that spot from Ron Cotta to keep that streak going, plus those two points. Villeman's got Lusk in front of him if he's going to make the podium. This could be breaking the uh, string as Ramsey now comes out. And uh, maybe Davey's got a report on him. Davey? Well, I think that Nathan crashed on the other side of the track. He came off favoring his shoulder. He rode about a half lap really slow. Seen with his mechanic, John Bundy. Ramsey, yet another casualty of what turned out to be a very difficult Metrodome track. Ramsey, after his best finish of the year, a fourth in last week's race. Carmichael, our leader. He's looking to become the second three-time winner on the season. Billiman getting by Roncata. Yeah, he finally made his move stick on Roncata, and he, he actually parked in the corner just a little bit just to make sure, like, hey, Stefan, okay, cut back under me one more time. It's going to be you and me out back. <laughs> He's two seconds behind Lusk for a podium spot. I'm not sure he has time. You can see that Billiman... White flag will be coming out. Although Ron Cotta's riding a beautiful race here, and it looks like he's going to be able to hang on to fourth. He's got a good gap over Jeremy. Another fine ride. A third, or a second at Anaheim, third last week, and then a fourth here. The leader on the upper right, Ricky Carmichael. You can see as soon as that's the corner where Billiman made his pass stick. Billiman opened up that gap quite a bit. The white flag for Carmichael. And it looks like Billiman's going to preserve that streak, making the podium at every single race. He's got Lusk in front of him. Oh, that's right. Forgot about Lusk. The Honda stopwatch. Let's check out some of these times. Carmichael and Fonseca. The interval between the two. Ryan Wolves popping on the far side as Ricky Carmichael hits that triple. Number four on the team Honda. Look at how low Ricky's handlebars are. It's going all the way back to the 80s now. This guy's making fun of him going, hey, it looks like Johnny O'Mara's bike. He's making it work. Should he hold on, he's going to surpass another 
Mark Clark has his record. And Jeff Stanton as well as he puts on a show for the fans right now. The checkers are waving. And it's Ricky Carmichael getting his 18th career win, his third win of the season. And Villeman gets around luck somehow in that last lap. Unbelievable. Villeman is on the podium again. So Carmichael picks up only five points on the points leader. That would be 23 points now separating Villeman from Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael, a happy young man. Wins his second straight race here in the Metrodome. Good sportsmanship on Bellman's part. Who wants to be a little bit more liked over here in the United States. Wants to be known as being from Corona, California. McGrath has got to be bummed with that mistake. Ending up at six. Oh, what a disappointment. He, he was looking strong. I, I don't know if he could have held off Ricky, but he might have been able to hold off uh, Fonseca and Villeman for that podium. Bradshaw is sixth on the all-time Supercross win list with 19 wins. This is number four's eighth victory. So he surpasses Stanton and Barnett. Ricky throwing it upside down with his goggles hanging on his elbow. This kid can throw that thing up. It, all the pictures in the magazine these days, all you see is his skid plate. He's so far upside down. He's redefined the whip as well as speed. But this is a costly race in many ways. Mike LaRocco, broken arm. Ramsey also a tough time. Let's check in with Davey. The guys, Ricky Carmichael down here talking to his boss, Jeff Stan. I guess he'd be part of his boss. Uh, amazing turn of events. Uh, Ricky had a chance to pick up seven points here on Billman, but Billman came back. I'm going to have to be the one to break the bad news to him. But right now, RC, what a fantastic ride that was. A lot of traffic, a lot going on out there. You came through, got yourself a win. I tell you, Davey, it feels great, man. Uh, woo, I don't know what to say, man. I'm so happy. Uh, I got a chip away at this point. That was a great race for me. And, uh, man, I don't know. Uh, I was just trying to do my own thing. I'm, I'm happy for myself, Honda. I tell you, everything is, is working good. Fox, Oakley, my trainer, Ellen Baker. Thanks a lot, man. It's so awesome. This seemed like a great track for you to get back on top. Ricky, we were watching all night long. The Rocco crashed out. We saw Ramsey crash out. Pastrana crash out. How tough was this Metrodome track? Oh, it was really tough. The dirt wasn't very forgiving, and uh, you had to have a lot of patience. And uh, I just kept it calm, and uh, that was the deal. Nice ride. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. To come back after Villeman beat him on the last lap last week. So important for RC. Ricky Carmichael getting the full 25 points. Monseca on the podium again. And Ron Cotta, his third. A fourth place, I, pardon me. Villeman stays on the podium now for seven rounds in a row. Estrada and Larocco having words with each other. 19th and 20th. We'll have final thoughts coming back in a moment. Right now, the celebration is on for Team Honda and number four, Ricky Carmichael. No one has ever come back from a further finish in the first round. Can he do it? Cycles, ATVs, and scooters. Lots of action on the track here in the Metrodome tonight. Uh, as we take a look at the Honda results page, Ricky Carmichael chipping away from that points lead of David Villeman with that victory. Villeman, though, admirable performance getting up to third. When you look at that, that uh, page right there, it all looks pretty normal, other than Fonseca having a great race. But what really looks wrong with this is 19th and 20th. LaRocco, an injury, looks like he may be out for the rest of the season. Pastrana ruined any chances he had at trying to win this championship. Let's go down to Davey Dow with our EA Sports Rider of the Week. Well, Ernesto, right when your teammate Ricky Carmichael needed a little help, you were able to deliver your best ride ever on a 250. Congratulations on second place. Yeah, I'm real happy. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it helped Ricky a lot. You know, uh, I got in between those two guys. And uh, I'm just real happy for myself, for the team. You know, everybody has been working real hard. And uh, just those. It seemed like all night long it was kind of a pinball game going on out there. Everyone bounced around everywhere. Was there any time when you felt like you were losing control of that race? Not really. I just kind of felt a little tired there towards halfway, and uh, you know it was. It seemed. It sure seemed like a long race, but uh, my Honda was working great. Just want to thank uh, Dunlop, my mechanic, Cliff, uh, Chuck Miller, Q, everybody. And uh, I mean the track was tough. You know it was rutted, and uh, 
you had to be careful. I caged that quad over there one lap, but um, I'm happy that I kept together for the 20 laps. One more spot to go and you get your first win. Thank you. The 100 point standings. David Villeman now with a 23 point lead on Ricky Carmichael. Boy, this looks like it could come down to the final race of the year in Las Vegas. Don't forget that's May 4th, live, pay per view, right into your own home from Las Vegas. Should that go down to the last uh, race of the year, it would be fantastic here in the 250s. Villeman sticking to his game plan. If he can't get the win, he's going for the podium. It's worked so far. It's round one, he had a 24-point lead on Ricky Carmichael. After seven rounds, Ricky only able to pick up one point. Let's go back to Davey now. Well, David, it didn't look like your night, but man, at the end, things came your way. You were able to kind of minimize the damage. Third place ride, keep your streak going for the whole season, always on the podium. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, you know, I had a terrible start tonight, and uh, it seems like it's been like that all year. You know, good start and bad start, but... I always came up you know, on the podium, so that's great for the championship. Uh, I would like to race with Ricky, and I think I'm, I'm able to race with him and to, uh, to make a good show. You know, that's, that's what I want to do. Nice ride. Thanks. Our next telecast, we're coming to you from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. That is the halfway point of the season, which means there's a lot of money on the line. The Clear Channel Midseason Points Fund, they'll divide $100,000 up amongst the top 20 riders. Also the second round of the Vans Triple Crown. The action was something else. Not all good, but some great action coming here at the Metrodome. Coming up next, stay tuned for the 125cc show from the Metrodome. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.